Peptides are exploding in the world of performance and longevity, but they're not magic. If your hormones, your gut, or your sleep are off, peptides won't work. In this episode, I'll break down how to personalize peptide protocols with the right testing, timing, and lifestyle upgrades so they actually deliver results that last. Peptides are all the rage, and I'm getting a lot of questions about them in practice, so I thought it'd be a good idea to sit down and talk about it for just a second. First of all, when we're going to talk about peptides over the next few minutes, it's not talking about GLP-1s. GLP-1s are a form of peptides, but they are more targeted towards weight loss, different from the peptides we're talking about today, which have been huge in the field of regenerative medicine, anti-aging medicine, and there's some exciting stuff going on in the field. Super exciting. I first learned about peptides about three or four years ago, and we were excited to begin to use them in practice. Many of these peptides, which by the way, are sequences of amino acids put together, naturally occurring in the body, but have found to have independent healing functions in isolation. As we started to wrap our heads around it, play with it, we started to see some amazing things in practice to the point that we wanted to understand and learn more. Since that time, peptides have become more common, more popular. They're actually even available online, although the sourcing is often debated, but we use it in practice as a part of a holistic strategy in dealing with many different areas of the body. And we're gonna get into that in just a second. But peptides conventionally have undergone a huge debate. When we started out those three or four years ago, there was a list of peptides that I could pick from and choose from. But then a year or two into that, the FDA took many of those peptides off the FDA approved list which is all to tell you that some peptides are truly FDA approved and some are simply not. It doesn't mean that they don't work, but they haven't undergone the FDA scrutiny to get that stamp. So many of them got taken away and over time, we're seeing some of them slowly start to come back. The other thing that's been like super interesting to me is the sort of the evolution of the peptide clinic where you go in and you get a cocktail of peptides that are supposed to help whatever condition. I find that interesting because I don't think there is a one solution strategy to many different issues that deal with the human body. Remember, a part of the holistic approach or the functional approach is that many different factors are influencing a particular area of the body. So whether you have joint pain or hair loss, or you're having trouble losing weight, or you're having issues with your skin or your immune system, all of that needs a targeted holistic approach. So welcome to Whole Plus, where that's exactly what we do day in and day out. And some of what we are trying to do as we bring peptides into the equation is to first make sure we've checked off some basic boxes. Now, when we are looking at peptide therapy, we are usually thinking about it for a particular condition. So in general, we want to at least make sure our patients are following an anti-inflammatory diet. They're getting in some key nutrients, which we know help to build peptides. These include things like the B vitamins, magnesium, getting the right amino acids in, zinc, and even glutathione. These nutrients and antioxidants help the body to repair on its own. They help the body to regenerate and help us to assimilate everything we may be eating, moving it to the right organs and to the right areas of the body. When we're not getting in that basic nutrition, well then sure enough, we're in a situation where we're not able to regenerate or heal from all the different triggers that we may experience on any given day. So again, the fundamentals don't change. A healthy diet, getting in the right micro and macronutrients, getting in antioxidants to help support things like oxidative stress and inflammation, and then really monitoring sleep and stress because they all play a role in what is happening with our peptides. Now, in addition to that, hormones influence this conversation too. So oftentimes when I'm going through a treatment plan or trying to build one, you know, we'll start with diet, we'll start with a few nutrients that a particular patient may need to support anti-aging or different functions of the body, move on from there into looking at sleep and exercise and lifestyle factors, but then also get into hormone optimization because that's a huge part of sort of regeneration, anti-aging, many of these things that we talk about. I talk a lot about hormones on this channel you know, definitely check out many of the hormone-based videos for both men and women to help understand how hormones are a part of the anti-aging and the regeneration conversation. But as our hormones decline, the rate of aging sometimes will speed up, meaning we might see things like a slower gut or a loss of nutrients. 
or even changes just in our skin, hair, muscles, and so much more. So after hormone optimization, which sometimes everybody's not a candidate for going on hormones, right? So you have to really sit and have that conversation as well. But after that is when we start to think about peptides and peptide therapy. And there's some peptides that I love and we have been using over and over and over again in practice. Let's go through some of my favorites and we'll talk about what we've seen. Now, there are peptides for inflammation. I love using, for example, some of the peptides around this like BPC-157, PDA, or lorazotide. Those are my favorites for inflammation and the gut component of sort of the anti-aging regeneration conversation. There are peptides for skin and hair. We've seen tremendous results with something called GHKCU, which is a growth hormone copper peptide. Wonderful for regrowing hair. It can be compounded to be put into like facial serums or skincare creams. And then in turn, we can see some improvement in wrinkling and collagen production as well. So that's another one that I love to use. There are more. CJC 1295 is one that we've used over and over again in practice to again, help with just general hormone balance but also to help with uh, weight loss and fat loss. That one's been one that's been a game changer for many people. And then there's some that I would love for them to come back. They were taken off that original list by the FDA, but those include things like KPV, which helped to control yeast or candida in many of our patients, was a game changer for so many of them. So in addition to CJC 1295, we've used MOTC, we used AOD. These have all been a part of like a weight loss strategy. KPV was one of my favorites for helping to control yeast. That one is not FDA approved any longer and very difficult to find. We've also used thymosin alpha to help the immune system and to help some of our patients really struggling with different immune-based disorders too. So as you can see, there are still a lot of peptides that we can use, many of which are slowly getting approved, more and more getting approved over time so that we can kind of widen the toolbox. And I think that's what's so exciting about all of this is that a peptide doesn't replace a healthy diet or a healthy lifestyle, but what it does do is it helps us to expand and widen the toolbox of how we're able to care for ourselves and how we can support different areas of the body, including inflammation, oxidative stress, hormone balance, metabolism, our immune systems, our mental health, and so much more. I hope this clarifies a little bit about what's going on with peptides. We're gonna to continue to post videos about peptides and talk about each one individually as well because there's so much information out there. But I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.